Hey everyone, it's Gina from OrchidandOpal.com and today I'm back with another tutorial, this time for a pendant using dagger beads and Rizzo beads and 11O and size 8O seed beads. These dagger bead pendants resemble a floral-like design and they have an open center and instead of forming a bezel around a crystal. Here's a look at one of these pendants up close. You can see that open design in the center and the Rizzo beads really add a lot of fluff and texture to the center of this floral-like design. If you don't have Rizzo beads, you could definitely try using the mini dagger beads that are similar in size. In fact, I've tried those before and it worked pretty well. Here's a look at the back of the pendant so you can see how this comes together. And we'll also be creating just a very simple herringbone bale that you can use as a loop that will work with any sort of chain or ribbon or anything you want to string your pendant directly onto. I'll leave the full list of materials as usual right down below the video as well as the quantities and links specifically to these materials. And I'll have the specific colors of everything that I'm using on the corresponding blog post that I will try to link in the corner. And that information should be available by latest the next day after the video is posted. I wanted to create these pendants and all sorts of different color combinations to give you an idea of how they would look done in different color schemes. And also because there's just so many different styles of dagger beads, especially that are on the market. So have fun with your choices, especially if you have dagger beads with any of the really cool etched patterns or special coatings or anything like that. For my beading thread, I'll be using the six pound test fire line in the black color so it's easier for you to see for the tutorial and a size 11 beading needle, but a 10 should work if you wanna use that size. Besides that, of course, just your scissors and normal beading tools. And once you've gathered everything up, we can string our beading needle with a comfortable length of thread and jump into this tutorial. First, we wanna pick up 10 of our dagger beads. We're gonna be using a total of 10 for this project. So just go through all those, picking them up one at a time, and then you can pull those down to the tail end of your beading thread. And you can leave yourself a few inches of a tail thread that you can weave back in later. And then take your needle again and go back around and through all of those dagger beads again one more time. And make sure you don't miss any. And then you see how these are coming together. I have the tail thread and the working thread that are starting to meet once we've gone through all those. Now I'm just gonna make a simple like surgeon's knot. I'm gonna do an overhand. And then I'm gonna loop this around twice, going this way. And pull that tight. And then I'm gonna sew through the next dagger bead with my needle. All right, now I actually added a needle onto my tail thread and I wove that back around and trimmed off the excess to get rid of it for the tutorial. So you're welcome to do that now or wait until later. And I'm coming out of this dagger bead right here. What we're going to do next is we're gonna pick up one 8 seed bead then sew through the next two dagger beads. Repeat that all the way around, so do that four more times. Pick up an 8 -o, and then sew through the next two dagger beads. And now do that three more times.
And these will all be sitting on the same side and it'll come together a little bit as we go. So if you need to, you'll just pull these up so they're all on the same side. And this is going to be the back that we're working on. So if you're working with dagger beads that maybe only have a design on one side or the other, keep that in mind. This is where you want to have the back facing up. So I'm coming out of this dagger bead right here. I'm going to step up by sewing through the next 8 0 that we get to. Then we want to have our 11 0 seed beads. We're going to be picking up three of those and inserting them in between each of our 8 0s that we had just added. So pick up three 11 0s, then sew through the next 8 0. And we're going to bring these into a little loop. So once again, pick up three 11 0s and go through your next 8 0. And now repeat that three more times. And then once you get to your last one, you can just go ahead and go through all of those seed beads one more time, going a little further past where you started just to reinforce this section a little bit. So just go through as many as you can and just start to pull those tight as you go. And then be coming out of one of the center 11 0 seed beads in a group of three. So I'm coming out of this one right now. And our next step is to pick up one 8 0, three 11 0s, and one 8 0. And then we're going to pull those down. Look at your next section of three 11 0 seed beads and sew through the center one. Pull those beads down, and we're going to do that four more times. Pick up an 8 0, and then three more 11 0s, and one more 8 0. Look at the next section of three that you're coming up on, and go through the center 11 0 in that next section. And pull, and we need to do that three more times now. And then when you're on your last section, you'll go through that next center 11 0 as normal. Pull that last group of beads in. Make sure everything is on the back just like that. And now we're just going to follow our thread path to the front of the piece. I'm going to continue going through the next 11 0 and the next 8 0 in that original ring. I'm going to start to flip this over. And coming out of this 8 0 on the side, I'm just going to head up through the dagger that's right above that. So we're looking at the top. I'm coming out of this dagger bead heading in this direction. 
And we want to add in five more of our 8 seed beads, just like we did on the bottom, but we want to stagger them so that they're not positioned right above the other ones. So if you look where you're coming out at the bottom, I can see that there is no 8 right here in between these two daggers, the one I would get to next which is perfect because we want to position our next 8 at the top right in that section and keep going. So looking at this at the top, we're going to pick up an 8 and then head through our next two dagger beads. Pick up an 8 head through your next two daggers. And now we'll do that three more times. So we have our five seed beads in place, and just like we did before, we want to step up going through the next size 8 and that gets us into position for our next step. And we are going to start using our Rizzo beads. So I'm coming out of this 8 and I'm going to pick up two Rizzos, and then I'm going to sew through the next 8 that I get to. We'll repeat that four more times. Pick up two Rizzos. And sew through the next 8 -o. And now do that three more times. And then when you get to your last section, sew through the 8 as normal and also sew through the next two Rizzo beads. Pull this nice and tight. And you should have something that looks like this. Next, pick up one Rizzo bead and sew through the next two Rizzos. And you'll pull this tight as you go. And now do that four more times. Pick up a Rizzo and sew through the next two Rizzos. Give it a little turn, pick up a Rizzo, sew through the next two. And now do that two more times. So at this point, I'm coming out of this Rizzo, and I'm going to sew through the next five. That's three. And I'll go through the next two. And we're going to be connecting some of these beads at the top and the bottom of our piece. 
Looking at this from the side, I'm coming out of this Rizzo right here, and I want to connect to the central 11-0 in that outer group of three. So that's what I'm going to be sewing to in this next step. And I'm going to be going toward the right with my thread. So we're going to be picking up three 11 O's. Then look at your piece and go directly across and pick up that central 11 O that you get to on that outer ring at the bottom. And then pull this, making sure that your thread is positioned off to the side and in between two of your dagger beads where it makes the most sense and it seems to be as closely to vertical as possible. Next, take your needle and sew back through those next two new seed beads that you just added and pull. And then pick up one of your 11 O's and then this time go through the other side of the Rizzo that you had started working with plus sew through the next three Rizzos that you get to. You see you now have an 11-0 on either side of that Rizzo we were working with and then that little stripe of seed beads. And I need to go through that next Rizzo. Pull that nice and tight. And we're going to be separating every two daggers with this step. We're going to do the exact same thing we did. And you can see our stripe is right here. And we know we want to separate the next set of daggers. We want these two to stay kind of together. And so coming out of this Rizzo right here, we're going to do what we did before and pick up three 11 O's. And then identify that group of three seed beads, the 11 O's right on the bottom. So back through the one on the bottom in the middle. And then just make sure your beads are going to be sitting in between those next two daggers, just like this. So these two are now in a little group. We've got our stripe forming here and we're going to sew back up through those next two new 11 O's that we just added. Pull tight. Pick up one 11 O and then sew through that same Rizzo but through the opposite way and then also sew through your next three Rizzo beads. Got one more to sew through. And that's what she should have so far. And we're ready to do our next one. We're gonna do this three more times. And this time, these two daggers are going to be sitting together. We're gonna pick up our three 11 O's. So back through that 11 0. Then sew through the next two that we just added. Pick up an 11 0. And sew through the Rizzo that we were working with, plus the next three. And I've got to sew through one more Rizzo. And this is what we have so far. We've got two more sections to do.
So here's the top of our piece so far. I'm coming out of this Rizzo bead right here. And I'm just gonna look right behind it and go down the seed bead that is right below that on the left. And then at this point, we are going to be adding in some more of our Rizzos and seed beads. We're gonna pick up one Rizzo and three seed beads. And then one more Rizzo. Then look to your next little section of two seed beads below your Rizzos. You're gonna go up through that next one that's sitting right there. And these beads, just train them so they sit right behind that row of Rizzos that we just worked on. And just take a moment to get everything positioned properly so that those are sticking up. And then give it a little turn and go up through that next 11 0 that you get to that's right next to it. Pull. And then do the same thing we just did. So pick up a Rizzo and then three 11 0s and then a Rizzo bead. Then sew up through the next seed bead. And position everything just like that behind that first row of Rizzos. And then sew up through the next 11 0. Repeat that step three more times. So all the way around. So now you have something like this. Just make sure you've pulled that tight as you've gone and you're going to sew up through your 11 0 and Rizzo and be coming out of that first 11 0 sitting there in that group of three. Then skip the middle one and go down the next one plus the next Rizzo. And that's going to get that center bead to stick out just a little bit. Then pick up an 8-0 and skip these next two seed beads, just head directly through the next Rizzo and the next 11-0. Skip the next 11-0 in the center and go through the third 11-0 plus the next Rizzo. And you can just take your needle and train that center one to pop out just a little bit. Pick up an 8 0, and we're going to repeat what we just did. Sew through our Rizzo and our first 11 0. Pull tight and turn. Skip that center 11 0. Go through that one and the next Rizzo, and repeat this all the way around.
All right, so again, here's a look at what we have. I'm coming out of this 11 I'm gonna skip the next one like we were doing, go through the next one, and go up through the next Rizzo right before that 8 bead. Now I'm gonna pick up three 11 O's, skip the 8 and just go through the next Rizzo, and also sew through the next 11 -0. So you can see we're just placing three of those 11 O's right underneath and around those 8 O's that are on the side. Do the same thing in this section you did before. Skip the middle 11 O and then sew through the next one and then sew through the Rizzo. And just keep repeating that all the way around. Three 11 O's. Skip the 8 O through the next Rizzo and continue on like you were doing. And then you can also sew through that next 11 O so that you're coming out of one of those central 11 O's right there in between two of your daggers. And that's where we're going to start our bail. And to do that, we're going to pick up three 11 O's, sew back through the 11 O that we are coming out of and pull. Now sew up through the seed bead on the left and then sew through the seed bead on the right or at the top there. And we're gonna make one more unit of right angle weave, just like we did picking up three of our 11 O's, sewing back through the seed bead we are coming out of, and pull, sew up through the bead on the right, and then left through the top seed bead. And now we're gonna be switching to herringbone stitch, which is going to create the rest of our loop and connect to the back of our pendant. So to get started with that, we'll pick up two 11 O's, sew through the same seed bead we're coming out of, going through the opposite direction there. And when you pull that, you've got your two seed beads we just added. Go up through the one on the left. Then pick up two more seed beads. Go down through the one on the right. Pull. And then sew up now through the two that are on the left. And we're gonna make seven rows of herringbone in total. So we've got two done now. And in the same manner, we'll just keep going by picking up two 11 O's, go down through the one on the right, and now go up through the top two on the left. And pull that nice and tight each time. I'm going to make another one for row number four. And do that three more times.
And here's a look at what we have. And that's going to just go right in between those two dagger beads, heading toward the back. And you'll be able to connect this to the back of your piece. Now, if you'd like to make a larger loop to accommodate your stringing material, you're more than welcome to. This will be perfectly fine for chain or some type of a slim cord or fabric. And that's all that I really need at this point. So I'm coming down out of the C bead there at the right. I'm going to connect this to the 11 O that's sitting right in between the two 8 O's back here, directly to the back of this bale. And we'll just pull that so that it tightens and sits right in between those two dagger beads. And now I'm going to go back up through all of that herringbone stitch on the left side, going through all those seven seed beads. Pulling tight, and now I'm going to head down through the seven seed beads on the right hand side. I'm going to catch that central 11 0 again. And this time I might reinforce that area by just going up through say the first three back there, and then down through the next three that are directly next to those. Then I'll go to the right through that 8 -0. At this point, we can start making our half hitch knots to finish off our threads. So I'll make one right there. And go through a few more beads. I'll make another one right here. Once again, go through a few more beads and I'll make one more and then I'll trim off the excess tail thread. But you can see that's where our bale is located. And if we flip this over, you see that little portion of right angle weave on the front. And you're more than welcome to reinforce that section too as you're weaving in your working thread. Once you do that, we can trim off our excess, add this to your chain or stringing material, and we can admire our work. So there is our finished pendant right in the center. All said and done, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You'll have to let me know if you plan to give this one a try or if you have and let me know how it goes. Have fun picking out your color choices and seeing all the different dagger and Rizzo beads especially that are out there. I will again link to everything down below the video and leave you the quantities and the materials that you'll need down there as well and the specific colors that I've used in each of these will be showing up on the corresponding blog post within the next day or so. I want to thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you will be back. Please make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and hit that big thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. And don't forget to share the tutorial with your other beading friends. I hope to see you all again real soon and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day and as always, happy beading. <music>